school parents inspired a nationwide campaign to ensure all vehicles carrying children had seatbelts fitted to the highest standards, as on board this school coach. Earlier this month, the government introduced new, tougher legislation, which for the first time requires seatbelts on all minibuses carrying children. Coaches will have to have them too, although older coaches built before 1988 have an extra year to have the belts fitted. During an accident, seatbelts are supposed to prevent passengers being thrown violently around a minibus or coach, sustaining serious, sometimes fatal injuries. At least, that's the theory. But here and now has discovered that some seatbelts simply aren't up to the job. They're more likely to tear a hole in the floor of the vehicle than save a child's life. These engineers have been testing the effectiveness of seatbelt installations. Their work has raised grave concern that many retrofitted belts, where seatbelts have been fitted some time after the bus or coach was manufactured, are seriously substandard. Some have been attached to vehicles which haven't been sufficiently reinforced to withstand them. In short, there's no guarantee the system will work. I think it's easy for people to think that the mere having of a seatbelt is a good idea. But it's not a good idea unless they're fitted properly and in the right places. What sort of problems do you encounter when you try to install new modern seatbelts on older vehicles, older coaches and minibuses? Proper factory-built minibuses have been subjected to in-vehicle testing of seatbelts and their anchorages. And that's not the case with elderly minibuses which are being converted. We asked Dr Reed to inspect the seatbelts on the minibuses of 10 Manchester schools. All the vehicles carry children every day. The anchorages are in the wrong places for, for any sort of seat. So I've seen enough of this minibus, this is dreadful. Half of the seatbelt systems he examined were either dangerous or illegal. But worse was to come when a similar spot check was conducted in Dudley, near Birmingham. The inspection revealed that 35 school minibuses had seatbelt installations which could be unsafe. The education authority, who believed it had done everything required to make its buses safe, was disappointed and bewildered. What are we as a local authority meant to do? It's very difficult when all the experts that you go to say it's fine and then somebody else comes along and says no it's not fine. Uh, we go to a if ensuring minibuses are safe has proved problematic, then education authorities and schools face an even bigger headache when it comes to fitting seatbelts on school coaches. Coaches are hired to transport hundreds of thousands of children to and from school every day. But from now on, new coaches with properly fitted seatbelts like this and this are far less likely to be doing the school run. Instead, the children will have to travel on coaches like this. It's much older, a little shakier perhaps, but a far cheaper option. In Hereford and Worcester, safety has been the highest priority since the Hagley School tragedy. But even here, contractors offering new vehicles with properly installed seatbelts are losing business to companies with older ones. Strapped for cash, the Education Authority says it can't afford to run modern coaches on all school routes. Coaches built before 1988 now carry pupils on about 80% of school journeys in the county. As a result of the new legislation, do you find that you're contracting more older coaches, pre-1988 registered coaches, than you would have liked? We've had to accept lowest bids from operators who have fitted seat belts which comply with the law. If there is a problem with that, then it's a problem that the law needs to sort out. So at the end of the day, it's not safety that wins, it's the cheapest bid. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. I think it is safety that wins because proper safety standards must apply for those vehicles to be licensed in the first place. But is he right? This is a typical coach carrying pupils to school in any part of Britain. But when we asked the manufacturers of this 16-year-old Plaxton Supreme where the seatbelts could be installed, they told us that without extensive reinforcement costing thousands of pounds, it simply couldn't be done. So, why are seatbelts being fitted to thousands of coaches like this, very few of which have had the essential reinforcement? 
until a few weeks ago, this coach was carrying children to school. It's passed its MOT, and the company who fitted the seatbelts on board claim in this certificate that they've been successfully installed. That may be so. But how much use would these seatbelts really be in an accident, say, at just 30 miles an hour? We decided to put them to the test. To do this, the coach has to be sliced in half. Then, a force equivalent to impact at 30 miles an hour is applied to the seatbelts. No. No. If the entire seatbelt system, including seat and floor fittings, holds firm, as in this successful test, then all is well. But look what happened when this school coach underwent the same challenge. Two, one, go. The seat belts haven't broken, we wouldn't have expected them to, but the seat is not strong enough and the seat connection to the floor is not strong enough and the seat is already lifted off the floor. But you finish up with a fast enough crash with all these seats with the people in them at the front of the bus. The effects could be horrendous. The standard of seat belt installation on this test coach is all too common. Confused, schools and education authorities are turning to the Department of Transport for reassurance. Does it concern you that, to our knowledge, a number of retrofit seatbelts, seatbelts where they've been installed on coaches that are older, they've not been installed by the manufacturer, are considered dangerous? If you go for retrospection, inevitably you can't have quite the same standards as you would like to have uh, for new vehicles. But we've gone as far as we can in saying that they should be installed to as near as possible the same standards as, as a new vehicle. And so as long as you go to a good and well-respected uh, um, uh, or firm, then I think you can be sure that uh, a pretty good job will be made of uh, installing seat belts. Why was our programme given a certificate by an installer to say that our seat belts were successfully installed, they were installed to the requirements of the law? We pull tested those seat belts, they failed abysmally. Why is that allowed well, to happen? If that was a pre 88 uh, vehicle, uh, that is something that uh, you will need to show me in, in some detail when we can have our officials looking at it because in the next tranche of uh, regulation we'll be looking at the older vehicles. But at the moment it's illegal not to have a seat belt but it, it isn't illegal if it doesn't work. It, at the moment it, you have to have the uh, seat belts uh, installed and they should of course be installed to a standard and if it's an older coach a standard as close as possible to the required standard of the, uh, the new vehicles. We've had one disaster